Hello, Dr. Taylor here, Dr. Taylor's Pedagogical Notes. I'm here to talk to you today about rational numbers or fractions. I'm going to add them, okay? So this is um, presentation number five, I believe. All of them can be found on the website, and the website's link is right there, and the student worksheets for post-activity worksheets are right there. They're understanding-based, not, not a worksheet with a bunch of problems to do, but a worksheet that has questions to ask them about their understanding. All right, so without any further ado, let's take a look at the concrete strategy. Now, on this one, I'm going to use a geoboard. If you don't have geoboards, you can make something like this on a piece of paper and give it to them, and it's just they can draw their rubber bands on it. But if you have a geoboard, then you're going to use rubber bands, right? And you could use a pizza or whatever, but you know, rubber bands on a geoboard is what I'm going to think of for my manipulative strategy. And if I have a thicker rubber band, it'd be nice to do the perimeter of my area model that I'll represent on here. If not, it doesn't matter. Do I need multiple colors? No. Do I need multiple thicknesses? No. But anything I can do to help students to keep things separated so that they, they can think about the logic of what it represents is going to be more beneficial. Just realize that. All right. So for the sake of the demo, I'm going to use three different colors, red, blue, and green. All right. And without any further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at our problem, two-thirds plus one-fifth. So that's what I'm saying. I'm saying I have two-thirds of something and one-fifth of something. If I put it all in a pile, how much do I really have? Do I have a whole part? Do I have less than a whole part? Do I have more than a whole part? That's really hard to say when the numbers aren't really contextualized with the denominators being the same. If I cut one pizza into tenths and one pizza into thirds and I take three of the tenths and one of the thirds, and I ask you, how much pizza do I have? And if I tried to build it, it might not be easy to understand. But if I have a strategy to help me do that, and that's what we'll explore here, I can begin to con conceptualize what it means to put together fractional parts and see how much of a whole that I get left over after I combine those pieces. All right, so let's get to it. All right, so doing this, we were assigned the width of the rectangle to be the first denominator. In this case, three. The denominator is the bottom number, all right? numerator over denominator. Okay, So I'm going to have a 3, and I'm going to call the height of this, the second denominator, which is 5. So if I'm making a box or a rectangle on my geoboard, it's going to have a width of 3 and a height of 5. So I'm going to go ahead and put a green rubber band around 3 by 5. Okay. Now, the, the vision I had when I created this was partners, each partner have their own geo board, they each be building one of the fractions themselves. I'm going to go on through it and keep doing it, but that's really what I'm hoping for because when you've got someone to talk to, it's easier. All right, so this represents a three by five shape. So that's going to be the fraction that I'm going to cut up. And the first thing says I have, what, two parts of the three. So I'm going to divide it vertically, right, because that's the one, two, three part, right? I can't. I can't do two-thirds horizontally because horizontally is more than three divisions. Can you see it now? That's why that dimension one way, dimension the other way is so important for this model. And it's also so important for understanding. It makes the understanding come alive. Okay? So that's one-third of it right there. So I need another rubber band to put right there, right? And now that's two-thirds of it. And over here is what? Three-thirds of it. Right. And if I have three-thirds, what's three divided by itself? How many times does three go into three? Right, so no matter how many different ways we ask it, we see that that's one. So right now, this represents three-thirds. But what I really want it to represent is what? Two-thirds, right? So I want to think about the fact that I have three-thirds, but I haven't really represented my numerator yet. Does that make sense? So one of our fractions is ready to be represented, but we haven't dealt with the numerator. Okay, so we're going to look at the other fraction now because, again, if you're working together, I want the person on the uh, other board to be able to keep up with you. Okay, so you're going to be looking at blue rubber bands and you're going to be cutting it horizontally because that's where the five divisions are. They're horizontally if there's one and two. You're just looping them over the pins, three and four rubber bands, but that's one, two, three, four, five regions. Can you see it? There's five regions. So now that represents the denominator of five. Right? So one board has the denominator as, th as thirds. The other board has the denominator as fifths. The thirds are vertically aligned. The fifths are horizontally aligned. Okay? 
So let's look at them together. There's both pieces, the first fraction and the second fraction. Order matters. Or does it? That's what we'll find out. We'll play with it. We'll discover whether order matters. We won't Google it. We won't look in our math book. We won't raise our hand and ask our teacher. We'll figure it out for ourselves. It's easy to do. Okay. So let's take care of the numerators now. How many thirds do I have in the first fraction? Okay. And how many fifths do I have in the second fraction? Okay. But if I just mark off fifths and thirds, it still doesn't really, it's like those pizzas that were cut into different size pieces. If I put them together, it doesn't make a nice, you know, if it made a half a pizza that was easy to see or whatever, but if it made some weird fraction of a pizza, I couldn't, I couldn't put a firm answer on it. But what I can do, and this is powerful, if you switch geo boards and who, you had this one, now you're putting verticals on that. And the person who had this one, uh, uh, who had this one, the other person's putting horizontals. So what's gonna, what it means is I'm going to transfer my partitions. My horizontal partitions are going to transfer. My vertical partitions are going to transfer. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to transfer all my horizontal partitions onto the first one. Now it has all the partitions that we made on one fraction. But to compare them, because that's what we're really doing, right? I want to put all the vertical partitions on the other one, right? And now, when I look at them, they are identical, okay? So they're divided up in a common way. All the partitions are the same in number and size. That means these fractions are identical to one another until I do the numerators. How many divisions are there? Well, one, two, three, right? Could I, could I count them and see if they're the same? Why don't you do that? Okay, so now that you've done that, hopefully, you can see that they're the same. And if you don't believe that, pause and recount, okay? All right, so let's continue. Now, we're gonna deal with the numerators, all right? So the first fraction's numerator is two-thirds. And it, the thirds are cut up vertically, right? One, two, three, yes? So I'm gonna cover two of them. Now, we could do it with a lot of things. I'm gonna use colored beads, okay? We use nickels and pennies, you could use beads, beans, a lot of things. All right? But they gotta be small enough to fit in the geo board. So I'm gonna put a colored bead in. So if this is one, two, three thirds, then I'm gonna fill up that thing. Oop, look, that was one third, and now I'm starting the next one, right? Why, why did I keep going? Because how many thirds did I want? I wanted two of them, okay? So now that's one third, two thirds, but not three thirds. So now I have two thirds represented, and I'm going to take a look at the second fraction. All right? But I did these vertically because the thirds went vertically, but which way do the fifths go on either one of them? That's right. They go horizontally, don't they? And how many of the fifths do I want to fill up with beads? That's right, just one of them. Does it matter which one I pick? Nope. Could I have done this first one and the last one instead? Or the second one and the last one? Absolutely. It's still going to be the same. If you cut your pizza into three long pieces and you ate any two of them, you would have eaten two-thirds of the pizza, right? It didn't have to be this one and that one, right? So it's the same thing here. I'm going to fill up one of these. It doesn't matter which. So I'm going to go ahead and put some beads in one of those fifths. So that's one of the five possible pieces. That's one fifth. Now, how do I figure out what that is? This is why we transferred partitions. This is the part that makes this doable and drawable, right? So now we have is we have two rectangles with equal proportion. Those proportions are three by five. From our previous area model, what is a three by five? How many squares will it have in it, right? Three by five is three appearing five times or five appearing three times. Or I could count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Three by five is 15, right? So they're cut into equal sized pieces. How many pieces did we eat? If that represented somebody ate two thirds of the pizza and somebody ate one fifth of it. How many of those equal sized pizzas, pieces did we eat now? Well, that was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, right? And then 11, 12, what? 13, right? So 10 beads and thir three beads, that makes 13 parts and out of a three by five shape, which was what? What is three by five? You figured out is 13 the answer? Is that the final answer? Is uh, 
two thirds plus one fifth 13? Or is it 13 parts? And how big are the parts? How many parts does it take to make a whole? 13 out of how many? This is that ratio piece, isn't it? Right? It's technically not a ratio. That would be 13 to 15, right? And the total number of pieces would be more than 15. So we've got to be careful with our terminology. I slipped that in on you, right? Proportion and ratio and fraction are all different things that look exactly alike. So what we want is the part of the whole. 13 parts out of how many? 3 by 5 is 15. So therefore, I have 13 out of 15 possible pieces, and I write it as that fraction, 13 fifteenths. OK? And that 15 represents what we teachers like to call the common denominator that you want to get when you add and subtract fractions. But if you can't remember how to do it, you can draw it. All right? So let's take a look at the graphical method, which would just be drawing area models, right? Thirds, fifths. Transfer my partitions, right? So there's my two thirds, my one fifth, my partitions transfer across. One, two, so now my vertical partition. Notice now on the uh, <clears throat> geo board, I transferred partition first and then I filled it in. Here, I filled in the numerators and then transferred partitions. What does that tell you? Well, it tells you if we get the same answer, it doesn't matter what order you do it. The order that makes the most sense to you is the appropriate order, all right? So since those are there, I'm going to transfer now my horizontals and boom. And now I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Holy cow. You can see it enumerate itself. What is 10 and 3? It's 13. I'm adding fractions. Fraction 1 plus fraction 2. I could draw that in there to remind myself. If I leave it out, it doesn't matter as long as I know what I'm doing. But if I want to make it clear, a plus sign really does that. 13 pieces. Oh, out of how many? What is 3 by 5? You figure it out, and what do you get? 13 out of 15, how do I write it? 13 fifteenths. 13 parts of the 15 possible pieces. Almost a whole pizza, but not quite, okay? Abstract, I'm gonna think about it. Mental model, right? I could imagine the partitions and transfer them in my head. I could imagine cutting it up. I could imagine it as circles as a pie chart if that's easier for me. In this particular case, I don't think it would be. But I'm finally going to create a sum of the pieces over the common denominator through a mental process. It's very hard to talk about how that happens abstractly, except to just talk about the imagining of the things that we've just drawn and symbolized. Okay. So that is the end of adding rational numbers. I hope it was helpful. Watch it again if it's not. Pause it, look at it, go back, get the uh, uh, slideshows from my website right there. Mm -hmm. All right. And next is uh, subtracting rational numbers or subtracting fractions. I look forward to seeing you there.